I persona right. Shoujo Joji. It is time, my brothers and sisters. What's up, amigos? Commander Jaime here, and I'm excited to finally show off Shurinuri Standard. This is going to be like an alpha bell, so see it as a template for you to tweak to your preference. I'm gonna talk about some suggestions, problems that we need to mitigate for the deck, and show off some dried plays as well. So let's get right into it. Check out Dueling Guard's deck boxes, play mats, and binders, the great quality products that are anime based. They continually have more anime options becoming available. Use the affiliated link in the description for a 5% discount on your next purchase. So starting off with our right line, we have our boy Modoy. So those who play premium and also V premium, uh, this is awesome that they retrained our boy. And the name is actually impactful too, especially when you play in premium, but let's keep it for standard for now. <laughs> so the great one is what you expect. It gives you the crust, draws you a card, and the crest for domination is this specifically. So a lot is happening. And so key things to know is that one, your Vanguard's 13K base. As long as you have the Shurinuri Oboro as your Vanguard, you cannot ride with other grade threes without that name. Your front units also get the 5K for each card face up in the G zone. And that is actually super important. And then during your turn, when your opponent's card will be placed by your ability or is dominated, their continuous and auto abilities are removed. They get power plus 5K. That 5K actually matters. Moving along with the right line, we have the grade two Genkai. This is a good retrain too. They really did this one right. And so kudos to Bushiro on this. So the first skill is that when you ride upon the grade three, this can pop out to record circle. You can soul charge and then also have the ability to call something from your opponent's drop zone to the regard circle. That sets, this makes sure that you guarantee have a regard for you to dominate essentially. The second skill is a regard based skill and this is when it sees a dominated unit attack. You can counter blast one, give that unit 10k for the battle. This also gets the ability to boost as well. So a couple things that domination has struggled in the G era and moving forward too is that one, you need a rigor to dominate. Two, there's some triggers when they're damage checked. So having a power buff of plus 10k on top of the Oboro power up and the Crest power up, mm, phenomenal <laughs> at that point too. Super helpful. Then we have the Shurinuri Oboro himself. And so also real quick, you can play the original copy. So if you're a seasoned veteran like me from G era, you can still play your shiny copies from that and also the new alternate arts that came out in history collection as well. Super excited for that. But the first skill is that during the ride phase, you can revive something from your opponent's drop zone. Again, it solves that problem moving forward. After the Genkai turn, this will keep calling stuff afterwards if you need it. Keep in mind that this has to be a Vanguard during the beginning of your ride phase. So this won't help. So this will not trigger the turn that you ride this on your grade three turn, essentially. This will be moving forward after that, essentially. The second skill is the break stride skill or the skill that activates when you stride. Choose one of your opponent's regards, dominate it, stand it, give it plus 4K and attack any unit at that point. So you have flexibility. But more times out of 10, nine times out of 10, you're going to attack the, their Vanguard to force a card out or they take a damage at that point. Since this is a stride deck set, I wanted to highlight the strides first before going to the rest of the main deck because I think seeing this and the big picture overall, you see how the deck forms up at that point too. Our first stride is going to be Magan Tembu. Great reprint. It's also kind of less flip card face up in the G zone, and it's an axe skill. Choose one of your opponent's rigards, standard, dominated, and attack any other unit. You can attack rigards, you can attack vanguard. Again, nine times out of 10, a vanguard. And at the end of the battle, it is retired too. So you're able to slowly dwindle the resources. And again, you can use Oboro skill to keep reviving in case they just don't call any rigards or they disappear at the end of the turn kind of deal. But one thing that I want to note, especially with both strides, Mukuro as well, their skills are an act. So when they flip a card in the G zone, your GB2 plus already moving forward before the battle phase even starts. So all your units before your Vanguard attacks will get the, the additional plus 5k power up from the crest that provides for each card face up in the G zone. To my knowledge, this hasn't been done yet with Chrono Jet or Messiah. Everything has been in the battle phase for that. So this is kind of nice that you can actually use some rear guards beforehand that are like GB2 base types of skills, which does come up. Now, Mukuro, you need a copy of Oboro to be able to discard. This doesn't count like the summation of grade threes. It has to be that specific card, but it is an act GB2 skill. Soul Blast 1, choose one of your opponent's rigors, stand it and dominate it, and attacks the opponent's Vanguard. This has to attack the opponent's Vanguard. Then at the end of that battle, stand and dominate all your opponent's Vanguards, and they can attack one rear guard of your choosing, essentially. So a couple of things. 
The domination from the rear guard that attacks the vanguard, that ends, and then the second ability to for the vanguard to attack is a separate timing uh, with the domination. So that's how that works. With Jira and domination FAQs, you could check out the, the blog article that have an FAQ cheat sheet for essentially for rulings. Um, domination as a whole, if you have multiple dominate units already at the same time, the domination state ends when all of them are done attacking and there's no longer attacks possible by dominated units. The, the way that it's worded, it's separate. So it ends the rear guard's domination and then it begins another domination at that point. So I just wanted to clarify that too. Again, I'll provide a, a link in the description with updated FEQs on domination too as well. So now that you have this in mind, let's get into the rest of the main deck. So for the rest of the main deck, we are playing two more copies of Aboro into the main deck. So you need to discard these copies to go into Mokuro, also in stride if need to be in first stride. You could play the fourth copy if you really want to, but most decks kind of have like the two extra copies in the main deck and they're pretty comfortable at this point. You will not go through a bunch of Mokuros, maybe like two at max at that point, and you could always fall back onto Mangan Tembu, worst case scenario. And the reason I say this is because the crest will scale up like tremendously crazy and you have access to restanders, so it just, you know, doesn't matter as much if you have the extra copy or not. <laughs> now onto some of the interesting stuff. So we're playing one copy of Forbidden Doll, two copies of the original Shurinui, and one Esperiata. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, now you may be thinking, like, why are you playing Esperiata? We have two restanders from the deck set. And that's true. I'm also maxed out. I'm playing them too. <laughs> this is the ninth freestander, essentially. Um, and so I really wanted to take advantage of Forbidden Doll. It's a great card. You can deck thing. You can revive cards, too, from the drop zone. So it's just a great card overall. And the two targets that you have are actually pretty good. Esperiata is a restander, kind of on demand. Again, if you pitch it for a stride, you can always revive it back later. And then the OG Sharonuri, GB2, if you if a unit has already dominated and, been, and, and attacked, this gets a continuous of plus 10k. So it's a 23k, but with the crest, it becomes 28k on first stride. And so it's a nice beater, especially if your opponent gets a trigger in the damage stack. So it, it helps a lot. So if you don't have the other great twos, like Furai, for example, or the units to like have like to boost as well to make numbers, this makes it a little easier as an additional option. Also, you'll be discarding OG Sharanui's too to be able to draw into more advantage. So for better though, can always just revive them later on if you like get the card later on too. If you don't have access to Esperiata or just it's hard to find and also it's kind of like overpriced right now. <laughs> don't worry about it. You can just play different cards. You can also play like the Rumbling Dragon or like Peeling Dragon too. It's a great four as well. Uh, so that might be something worth exploring too. There's also like the thought of Tribash. I, I was thinking about it too because it's it's a great three that you can search with for better doll, but it also goes into soul, so it helps like fuel the soul. Um, that's something that just gives your Vanguard crit, but feel free to try it out or just put in more great twos or great ones and go from there. Now into more of the rechains that's really, really, really good for this deck. So we have four copies of four eyes. So the continuous scale is that it gets 5k for each time a unit dominated attack this turn. So first stride, you're going to have two because of Magan Tembu and your break strides go from a Boral. So this will be 20k base, and then with the Crest, we'll give it another 5k. So it's 25k on its own, which is a really good solid beater as well to rely on. But then the second skull makes it even better. GB1 when your Vanguard attacks, and if you already dominated a unit this turn, Soul Blast 1 and stand this unit. So again, you have Restanders, and it really takes advantage of the Crest power up too. And if any triggers that you have, you can still put them on this unit later on. But it also has synergy with Makura, where you can have your opponent's dominated vanguard get the drive checks from that and you could stack them onto your restanders that haven't attacked yet as well so just valuable synergy at that point definitely play four we are also playing four copies of seikai this is the new unit uh, very similar uh so this goes a little bit different though when your vanguard attacks again if it's if well if you dominate a unit this turn and it attacked soul blast one stand this unit and if your g zone has two or more face up cards you get to draw a card and it gets plus 10k until the end of the turn so ideally, you like to see this unit second stride moving forward, so that way you can maximize on the drawing, but also get the power buff too. At that point, the crest will give you power, so it's like even super nuts, and it can help like really finish the game. You really rely on the restanders to push for game two. Your Makuro and Magan Tembu aren't necessarily like finishers on their own; they're just like providing more attacks and also opportunities to draw into cards or activate triggers in a way too. For you to take advantage of the last grade two that i'm playing is the cold glove fan um it's the grade two cycler for each uh, nation so this one is for the dragon empire and essentially when you discard it during the right phase you can soul blast one bottom deck this card and then draw a card so um, as you're going through your right deck early on this 
deck doesn't have great early game at all, really. Um, so you need to have some advantage also, like just to be able to guard attacks, but also potentially dig into other pieces that you can commit to the board to be able to like fight back some early aggression too. So that way you don't have too much damage going into the stride game or you lose before even the stride game begins. <laughs> this is one of the big weaknesses for the deck. And so this is one of the ways that I'm mitigating it. Um, you can really draw a lot of advantage here too. Once you start performing stride, for example, for a stride, if you need to pitch two cards, this would be ideally the two cards you can. You can soul blast two, draw two cards. It just depends how much soul you have. You can also over overpay the cost of stride too in that sense, as long as you're doing the Mug and Tambu stride. But if you do the Makuro one, it has to be the grade three Makuro. It doesn't tell you to like discard a summation with Makuro in the name or something like that. It's very specific with that. The other skill is not used because you don't Persona right in this deck because again, it's a stride deck set. If you don't like this card, you feel free to try out a different grade twos. I'm sure there's some other options that you can fill in to give some like early game pressure. There's also like the dinosaur that's like on hit as well for more pressure. But I feel like this card is nice because like every other piece in your deck, you really don't want to discard. <laughs> and most of them, you cannot revive them or get them back to your hand again, because one, it's Dragon Empire. But two, like for better, that was like the only revival card that you have. And that only revives like the grade threes and the grade fours. Onto the grade ones. Now you may be asking like, Commander Jaime, you're playing a lot of Soul Blasting units, like your entire grade two lineup and your Aspirata Soul Blast. <laughs> Not to mention Makuro. How do you Soul Charge essentially to feel for that management? And so... I am playing three copies of Whiplash Dragon, Whiposaurus, and also three copies of Forktail. And so I've tried Zenkai, the new one that's coming out in the deck set as well. There's also the Kaje Chika too, the, for the Shoujo Doji deck as well too. So we actually have options to play in Toy with. Each has its pros and cons. So depending on your deck build, just make the appropriate changes that fit for that. Also keep in mind the metagame as well too, that may be impactful. But the reasons that I picked Forktail and, and Whiposaurus is really one forktail is something you could always call in the early game and later on and it just works right and so you don't have to wait about some like domination attack like zenkai does and then also like hoping that it hits too <laughs> that's the one thing i did not like zenkai about that you hope that it hits and especially if your opponent's already five damage they're gonna guard everything so you're not gonna get that soul charge right so with forktail though you can soul charge at will plus it's decked in your deck you check the top seven for a stealth unit that's normal a normal unit and so you like soul charge that way now, with the Whiposaurus, I wanted more soul charging options, so it wasn't just enough to play like four Forktail and just call it a day. I have six cards that soul charge essentially, and the Whiposaurus is really nice because it's able to soul charge too, assuming that your Vanguard's grade is greater than your opponent's Vanguard's grade. So if you're going first in the early game, you can call this unit and you'll always be able to soul charge too because you'll be a grade higher. Until once you get to the strike game at that point and you're both like grade threes, you have to stride into your grade four and then during your strides you can actually still soul charge because nine times out of ten your opponent's playing a grade three that type of deck the only like grade four decks that are really like still representation is like serapula with a new support that it's you know grade four at that point but all, every other deck is a grade three <laughs> so this guy is also live but the difference is that this guy soul charges too so you can Look at it essentially that this makes two of your restanders live in that turn. This can make your Makuro and a restander live. So just having the excess soul charge makes it where you don't have to think about it as much. And you can focus on the things that you're trying to do in that game and win as well. Again, you're more than welcome to check out the other like soul charging units. So I'm not saying they're not anything less, but again, depending on your deck build, um, that could be a thing too. Now for the rest of the grade ones, two of the stride fodder, essentially the doggo, I call them. <laughs> I like this art. It's like blue art type of like the original art with the orange. Like it, it just looked creepy <laughs> back in Jira. I will be up front with that. But like this type of art is actually not bad. So essentially you can pay the cost of stride with this card. So this is good going first, essentially. Then the second skill, it's an act. You can actually discard this card if you have an Aboral Vanguard and you have the crest and search a copy of essentially a Boro in this case. In premium, the, there was a mention that Zanki also has the, the Demon Stealth Dragon Shurinuri in its name, so Zanki would also count, but that's in premium. And if that ever comes to standard, then this card will have more targets essentially too. But for right now, it's just the Oboro target. So this is great to have in your hand and also get the copies that you need for the following turn to be able to strike into Makuro. Then we're playing three of the new Stealth PGs because they're ninjas and then the Sanctitude. Um, it's if you're going to get other stride deck sets such as like Messiah, Chrono Jet, and then of course the Shurinuri Mare, and then of course Luart's coming out, um, more than likely you are going to see Great Force at that point. So this becomes a one card PG. The PGs are also stealth in the name. So this helps with Forktail. So if really need to be, this is the only option that you have. You can soul charge the PG 
just to make sure you have enough salt to be able to do the thing that you need to do that turn. <laughs> now for the triggers, there's some kind of wiggle room that you can play. I'm playing four randoms here that are, and then a total of eight crit, of course. I, I realized that I only have one copy of the, the one that goes into Sol, so I my order hasn't come in and I wasn't gonna proxy this. So if you're curious, this is four copies of the one that goes into Sol. Again, you want to be able to have cards that go into Sol or Sol Charge, so that way you don't have to think about it as much, especially if you're playing nine restanders, and then of course, if you bought you rely on Mokuro turns too. So just having cards just to help fuel the soul just makes that a lot easier and more smoother. If you don't have these cards and you really don't care for much with the triggers going into salt, you can play the vanilla crits too, and you'll be fine too as well. Then we're also playing three draws and the dragon umpire OT. Uh, with the draw triggers, there's a debate versus draws versus fronts. I feel like this deck is a combo based type of deck. So you wanna see your key pieces. Also, this early game is not that great. So you're going to take damage, <laughs> whether you like it or not. So damage checking a draw trigger is much more helpful than a front trigger. So that way you get the extra card that you need and it might be able to save your, your butt at that point too. On Mokuro turns, since you make your opponents, since you dominate your opponent's Vanguard, you'll get drive checks through your deck. And so you'll be able to see chances of drive checking draw triggers which can get you into like your second restander or just any restanders that you still need to like push that turn to. So it helps a little bit to dig deeper in the deck as well, even in the mid to late game. And with Sander with having not enough like big shields, except with like triggers and sentinels, you value the draw in most cases. I would say this card is even more nuts in this deck. Yes, it restands your Vanguard, um, but essentially if you restand your opponent's dominated Vanguard, so like if the dominated Vanguard essentially drive checks the OT from your deck, you can restand that same dominated Vanguard. You can give the 100 million to any of your cards, like the restanders or your own Vanguard if you want to. Then as long as your opponent has another regard as a valid target, your dominated your opponent's dominated Vanguard can attack it and you'll get the additional drive checks as well. So you literally just plus, you get another attack. It's just, <laughs> right? And it gets better too if you have a mukuro turn with the restanders right and you attack with your restanders first and then when you attack with your vanguard you soul blast two to restand them both so in this moment your 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 vanguard's arrest right but if you get the over trigger you can stand your vanguard give the 100 million to any of these especially if you see a crit trigger so that way it's going to hit hard but guess what these two cards are now once per turn. <laughs> so if you have excess soul, you can attack them again. Then the Vanguard can attack a second time. Soul Blast two and restand them once more. So each restander can possibly attack three times that turn. And if you had any crits from like the Domination Vanguards or the same drive checks from this guy, this makes one of the regards at least like super deadly. And oftentimes we'll see the deal, to be honest, at that point. I wanted to point that out because if it does come up, go nuts. And then lastly, heal triggers. Um, once that comes out in English too, and then we'll, we can watch Japan. They're, they're getting it later this week. Uh, we'll see what the type of heals that they play. Um, but I just use the 15Ks for now. So if you want to change it to an effect heal, you're more than welcome to. And just quickly with the stride zone, I mean, it's really just four copies of each card. Um, there's not much to it. And I already explained the effects and everything. So definitely play all of them. You may not even use them all, but it is what it is. You just have the room. The turn that you ride up to grade three and you first stride, you want to do Oboro, and then you got the grade two skill to come out and soul charge one. If they have no regrets, you can call it through the board. You can pay the cost of stride, break stride skill, dominate something, give it plus five from the crest, four from Oboro and attack the Vanguard. Then you could use Mangan Tembu to kind of bless, dominate the same Rigard. It keeps the power for the turn, essentially. So you can take advantage of that. Then you can use Genkai to also kind of bless to give that attack another 10k and it becomes a booster you can use a card like forbidden doll to grab pieces like these two but this one will be called and then if you have sekai it's also a great beater with the crest and the two dominated attacks this is 25 this will be 28 vanguard on attack soul blast one restand drive checks then boosted boom and that's first stride now makuro stride play you can discard a copy Break Strike skill, dominate something, give it plus nine and attack the Vanguard. Before you do Makuro skill, make sure you call something, like a Restender, ideally. Then use Makuro skill, Soul Blast one, dominate your opponent's Regard again, attack the Vanguard, and then at the end of the battle, dominate their Vanguards, then attack their Regard. Then you perform nine times out of 10, Twin Drive. 
And if you have any triggers, put it on the restanders that you have on board. So this is why you want to call a restander ahead of time. You could also draw into combo pieces so you can further extend your main face because again, you're in the main face still. And let's just call this as a booster as well. This will be the weakest. Next with this. Then on attack, then on attack, soul blast two, restand, drive checks. And then boosted, and then boosted. If you so happen to see an OT in this point of the game, just like I mentioned, your Vanguard will restand. You give 100 million to something, especially if they have a crit, then they can attack again. But then on this time, you could soul blast two more cards to restand them. So this will be the third time that they can also attack. And then of course do drive checks. The OT will give you three more attacks in the best case scenario, one Vanguard and two regards. And that's the deck profile, amigos. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a really fun deck. I started playing Vanguard with Nubatama back in BT like 14 when it became an actual deck. So shout out to my friends that taught me that night too as well. So it's really humbling to see this deck continue on basically almost 10 years later when that happened. Again, try it out to your preference. Experiment. I'd love to hear your feedback too and other cards that I may have not mentioned or even considered. Feel free to share your suggestions in the comments down below. If you're still struggling with like the domination rulings, I've linked again the FAQ that is helpful and also updated as well too with the new rulings that just came out with Makuro. And if you want to improve your skill level at the clan or even prep for BCS, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So feel free to check out my Mattify info. Just happy to help out wherever I can. And if you want to support the channel, Check out the affiliated links with 50 card shop, trading card men, card trader zero, TCG player, and also check out dueling guards, binders, deck boxes, and playmats to increase your anime swag. Until the next one, amigos. Bye.